Good evening, everybody. For my job, I have faced down a group of Hell's Angels with a shotgun. I have outrun a tornado in Missouri. And I was arrested and held in a holding cell in Los Angeles for kidnapping a child. I didn't do it. OK. No, I actually found the child. But because my job is a private investigator, things happen to me that don't happen to other people. But let me tell you about the scariest thing that I ever did. I was working for the Federal Defender Capital Habeas Unit. So if you are familiar with the terms, it means I work for people on death row. And one of the things we have to do is to find out the history and the background of our clients. Now, four people had tried to find out what was going on with our client by talking to his dad, but his dad didn't want to talk to them. Two attorneys, two investigators, so they sent me. I'm in Roanoke, Virginia. I know I've got to go to rural Virginia, and I want to talk to dad. I look at a map, and I see, good, straight road. No problem. 90 miles. I can do this. Couple turns off the main road, and I'm there. Turn on my GPS, put on some music, and I start driving. It's pretty, nice scenery. Doesn't take me long. And all of a sudden, really about a half an hour before I think I should have heard it, my GPS says, make a right hand turn ahead. I'm a good girl. I follow instructions. <laughs> I make a right hand turn. And I should be within five minutes of this house. But I go about a half a mile and make a left. So I make a left, but it's a hairpin. It's like a switchback. And this time it goes back, but it goes up. Make a right, back and up. And it's going faster and higher. And I'm on, I'm on a mountain road. It's getting darker. It's, it's getting higher. See, there's the word. I have acrophobia. I am scared to death of heights. And with every switchback, I realize it's really steep. And the road isn't very wide. And if somebody is coming towards me, I'm in deep doo-doo. I can't back up. Uh, I'm not going over that. Uh-uh. So I slow down, and I take a deep breath, and I keep going right, left, right, left. It takes me 45 minutes to get up the side of this mountain. Fortunately, I don't see anything. But unfortunately, I don't see anything. I don't know where I am. I'm, I'm at the top of the mountain. I'm by myself. I'm in a strange place. And you might think that's good that I finally made the top of the mountain. But let me ask you this. What's worse for an acrophobic than going up a mountain? Going down the mountain. OK. Well, now I had to face my death, because with every turn, I could see over the cliff that I was going right, left, right, left. I don't want to say I was crying because I'm a big girl, but I, I, I a tear, you know. It was, it was a little verklempt. And I'm, I'm holding on for dear life, and eventually, I know I'm at the bottom because there's no more rights and no more lefts. And within five minutes, I'm, I'm in this guy's driveway. I just took it an hour and 10 minutes going over a damn mountain, OK? And I'm sitting in his driveway. And I'm trying to get myself together. I am soaked through with sweat. I'm holding on to the steering column for dear life. And the man is outside picking tomatoes. And he comes over to my window. And he leans in and he says, did you just come over that there mountain? <laughs> Were you afraid? So that's why I can see the whites around the pupils of your eyes, huh?
do you want a drink? <laughs> and he reached in and peeled my fingers off the steering column, took my hand, and walked me to his porch. He sat me down, and he poured me something which I think he brewed in that little shack out back. It was pretty strong. I can drink, but it was pretty strong. I still couldn't talk. I was getting my breath together. He was outpacing me, man. That man was doing it. He poured me a second one. I think it was his fourth. Uh, he said, are you all one of those people from up north that wants to know about my son? He said, I didn't like those other people. They talk too much. You don't talk much, do you? <laughs> And he started talking. And he started telling me about his son and his son's life and all of the things that no one else had gotten because they were so busy asking the questions that they wanted to hear the answers to that they didn't take the time to listen to what he had to say. An hour later, a little tipsy, he <laughs> helped me back to my car. I thanked him because by then I had found my voice and he showed me the way to get back without going over the mountain. And I thanked him for that too. And I got back on the road and I started to drive. And as I passed the entrance to the mountain, but I was on the main road, there was a sign that the state of Virginia had put up that said, airplane mountain this way. I didn't go that way. Underneath it, was a piece of paper torn out of a composition book, and in magic marker was written, y'all, GPS don't work here. <laughs> Thank you.